So then guys, for years, Apple have been the pioneers in making chips for their mobile devices like the iPad and even more importantly, the iPhone. And they've always been leaps and bounds ahead with their A-series chip, just like the A18 and the A18 Pro. But recently, in the last couple of years, and even now, the company Qualcomm with their Snapdragon chip, well, they're getting a lot better. And when I mean a lot better, I mean really a lot better. Just recently, Qualcomm just had their Snapdragon Summit in 2024, and at that event, they just announced the Snapdragon 8 Elite, what is the successor to the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. At this event, they boasted that there is a 44% improvement in power efficiency, a 45% performance increase in single threaded CPU tests, and then another 45% increase even in multi-core performance tests. was absolutely amazing. So the big question is right now, is Apple scared right now? Is Qualcomm going to fully overtake the likes of Apple with their A-series with, you know, Qualcomm and their Snapdragon series? Well, I've decided today to actually show you some charts with some numbers to see what the differences are. But what I would say is the eight elite numbers have actually come from Qualcomm themselves. And what I would say is I would take them maybe with a little bit of a grain of salt because the numbers, maybe they are quite good. And I'm going to admit that because obviously I know the numbers, but at the same time, what I would also say is that with these numbers, maybe they might be ever so slightly lower, not by much, but just a little bit lower. But let's have a look then, first of all, at Geekbench 6 scores. So here we have it then. So at the top here, we have the A18 Pro. And as you can see, in single core performance, we have an impressive 3,484. And this is very similar, just underneath the sort of power of the standard M4 single core performance like we've got in the iPad Pro, for example, and even multiple multi-core performance is super impressive at 8,568. What you've got to remember at this stage is that multi-core performance is incredible that the likes of say an M1 chip, the normal M1 was in the Mac Mini, the MacBook Air, the iMac, and you know, one or two other devices too. That kind of chip had a very similar multi-core performance to the A18 Pro, what is absolutely amazing. And here we are around about say three or four years later and we're achieving something very similar inside of a phone. But moving back though to the chart, the Snapdragon 8 Elite has a single core performance of 3,234, but has a multi-core score of 10,059. And then you can see this compared to the last generation Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 with a single core performance of 2,240. And then obviously the multi-core performance was 7,120. And this performance game with the Snapdragon 8 Elite is absolutely bonkers. It is super powerful. But you're probably wondering at the stage, how is Qualcomm doing this with the 8 Elite? You know, how is it so far ahead than the A18 Pro, especially even in multi-core performance? Well, the difference comes down to core count, I think. So right now with the A18 Pro, we actually have a six core CPU. We have two performance cores and we have four efficiency cores inside of the actual CPU. Whereas Snapdragon, the Elite 8, Qualcomm has said, actually, this is made up of an eight core CPU. We have two performance cores, just like the A18 Pro and the A18 even, but what we have instead is six efficiency cores inside of this, and they are super powerful chips, even to be efficiency ones. So right now, looking at this chart, it does look like that Apple have got the slight upper hand in single core performance, but really, it's not much in it. We've got 3,484 compared to 3,234. And I'll be deadly honest with you, if you actually have an app that actually uses that single core performance, you're not really gonna see much difference between, you know, if you ran the same app on it, if it was right down to that core level, there's not really gonna be much in it. But what about the actual GPU score? Well, I'm gonna tell you about that right after today's sponsor. So then guys, just quickly, look at all this crazy stuff I've got around me right now. And you wouldn't believe it, everything that you're seeing here, apart from like physical, like MacBooks and iPhones has all been 3D printed. That's right, all of this has been 3D printed. And do you know how I've done this? Well, I've been printing everything on the Bamboo Lab a1 Mini Combo. 
This 3D printer is incredible and I want to tell you more about it. It is a plug and play fully auto calibrated printer from the start. And this 3D printer isn't just like any other 3D printer out there. Oh no, it also has the AMS light, what you can see right here, what allows you to print up to four different colors all at the same time on one print. I've been able to print such things like this extendable arm that you can see right here. Obviously it was done in different parts, but it's absolutely incredible and it's super sturdy too. Or something else that I have printed is right down here. And this here is a lovely dock for my MacBook Air. And then I've also printed out a pillow for my iPhone. And also this here allows me to amplify the sound from my iPhone too. And we're just docking it inside of it. There are so many different things that you can print with this printer. And the great thing is you can even download loads of different prints on the Bamboo Handy app, which gives you access to loads of different prints and then they're actually customized for all their different printers, just like the A1 Mini. And best of all guys, Bamboo Lab right now also have their Black Friday sale. It's already started and it's gonna last all the way till December 3rd and you can get the best deals ever on Bamboo Labs printers and accessories. And you'll definitely want to check out the A1 Mini because it's a fantastic printer. And if you haven't got started in 3D printing, this is definitely a printer that I would seriously recommend. And if you want to check out all the details and all the different kinds of printers and bits and pieces that you could possibly print too, definitely check out all the details that are in the link in the description of this video right now because this printer and all the printers really from Bamboo Bamboo Lab are absolutely incredible. And with that, let's return back to the main video. But moving on then, what about the GPU scores? Well, the great news is Qualcomm have given us some scores here in 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme Test in frames per second. And let's have a look at the chart right here. So as you can see here, the A18 Pro, it can achieve around about 28 frames per second when you run 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme. And then with the Snapdragon 8 Elite, you can actually achieve 43 frames per second. And even the current or the last generation Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, it can actually achieve 32 frames per second. So again, Qualcomm have pushed out GPU performance way, way ahead here. Well, it's absolutely incredible to actually see here. So this means then for full on 3D kind of games, you know, I would actually argue that it's better to definitely go down the Snapdragon kind of road. Not trying to say that, you know, the A18 Pro is bad or anything like that, but we are again ahead here. Now, what about kind of overall kind of scores then? What about if we actually decided to mix everything up together? So let's say the memory, the CPU, the NPU, you name it, GPU, all together. Well, that's where Antutu comes into play. And the great news is, again, we've had a score from Qualcomm. As you can see right here, the A18 Pro right now has a score of 1,659,199. But then I'm gonna jump over to the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, and you can see that had a score of 1,007,064, whatever, 262. I'm just gonna read out the numbers, I can't be bothered to actually say them properly. But look at the Snapdragon 8 Elite. We are talking almost double the performance of A18 Pro as an overall score with Antutu. And that is absolutely crazy what we are seeing here. But what I will say is there are reasons why the score could be so much higher. We just don't know at this stage. So for example, I'll give you a really good one. The A18 Pro only has eight gigabytes of RAM paired up with it. Whereas even Qualcomm themselves said that the new Snapdragon Elite 8 can go up to 24 gigabytes of RAM. So, you know, this might be an actual test from their top benchmark sort of um, phone out there with 24 gigabytes of RAM inside of it. And it's giving this score because obviously it would push up that memory score and give the overall score a higher amount. We just don't know at the stage. But the point is, you can see just a kind of finger in the air kind of assumption here that it is way, way ahead. The capabilities are so much more higher here with Antutu on definitely with the Snapdragon Elite 8. Now, the next thing though you might be thinking about, well, surely that all of this extra power in the Snapdragon 8 Elite is gonna come at a cost. So this means that battery life is gonna be probably even worse. Well, this is the weird thing. 
Qualcomm even said in their presentation here that, that you're expected to see a 45% improvement power efficiency up to 45%. And I think they even said right now that even with a gaming device that you could get up to an extra two and a half hours with battery life with gaming. What's well, absolutely incredible. Just remember, just recently, there has been lots of videos bouncing around, say with the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra and also with the iPhone 2, with the iPhone 16 Pro Max. The iPhone 16 Pro Max just beats out the likes of the S24 Ultra. But could you imagine this? Getting a 40% gain on battery life on say an S24 Ultra right now from Samsung. Had the same battery, same bits and pieces, but you just put that chip inside of it, we would be running circles around the iPhone. And this is absolutely crazy to see. I predict that when we get the next Galaxy, the battery life is going to be phenomenal. It is going to really set the bar. What's well, been the first in years from Samsung over the iPhone. This is going to be absolutely incredible to see. And it really does mean, like the thumbnail even shows, that Tim is a little bit scared right now. He really needs to pull his socks up and Apple really needs to get into gear here to actually make their A19 Pro even more efficient and also the A19 than what we're getting from say Snapdragon. They need to be on par with them or get better. And this is going to put a lot of pressure because obviously this time next year when we get to the A19 Pro, you know, if Qualcomm comes along again and brings out another chip and even if they say they do an improvement of even say 20% more efficiency, that is going to even set the bar even higher again this time next year. An A19 Pro might be able to match the Snapdragon Elite 8 or the 8 Elite we have right now, but you know, if they set the bar again, Apple is going to start falling behind here. So what I would say is, is obviously do take these scores with a grain of salt. And of course, when the first Snapdragon device comes out, I'm going to try my best to actually get my hands on one of these with the 8 Elite inside of it, because obviously I really want to test it out and compare. And I'm sure a lot of other YouTubers will be doing the same. But with that as well, guys, what do you think? Do you think Apple are starting to lose their track now with everything? And do you think other competitors are starting to overtake? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And with that as well, guys, it's time to wrap up this video too. So if you have enjoyed watching it, please do press the like button. Also, if you want to hear the latest Apple news, reviews, and comparisons, make sure you subscribe to this channel and also hit that notification bell. Until next time, guys, I'll see you really soon. Take care. Bye-bye.